the next tier, we have to come to grips with that, and we have to get the opinion of this committee. Thank you. Gentlemen's time has expired. Mr. Pascrell, uh, just a reminder, uh, after your questioning, we'll go to two to one so we can balance out the uh, rest of the hearing. Uh, I'm sorry? After your oh. questioning, we'll Thank move you. to two to one so we can balance this out. Mr. Pascrell, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I think it's uh, clear after uh, Montreal and Mexico City, and thank you for your indulgences up there, that we're getting, we're approaching, I think, a culminate, culminating part of the negotiations. That's my judgment. Uh, we have a lot of tough issues to address. Some of, and I quickly went through the document that we're supposed to be talking about today. Part of it is NAFTA. Uh, some of your NAFTA proposals have really challenged the status quo of U.S. trade policy. And, and I think have been creative in trying to make the agreement work for the many and not just the few. All the boats have to rise. And I have uh, confidence still that you are working to ensure the labor chapter of NAFTA is fully enforceable. Building on the strength of the May 10th agreement as a floor and not a ceiling. And I want you to interrupt me if I say something that is not in place. Please feel free to do that. Enforceable labor standards alone will not entirely solve the key driver of outsourcing under NAFTA. We all know that. For 25 years, Mexico has engaged in a purposeful strategy of labor and wage suppression in order to attract investment at the expense of the U.S. and the expense of Canadian workers. And in ways that have expanded poverty for Mexican families instead, the record is clear on this. The numbers are clear. Building a middle-class market for the U.S. exports. You identified uh, in the trade agenda report, you identified, you said this, since NAFTA went into effect, the gap in Mexican wages and labor productivity with the United States has widened. The OECD, the organization um, that we know about for many years, reports that the average annual wage in Mexico fell from $16,008 in 1994 to $15,311 in 2016, unquote. I met with the workers in Mexico City just a few weeks ago because reading about it, and looking at statistics is very different than hearing anecdotal stories about actual situations that are tangible. And no Democrat and no Republican can deny these. They were in the auto parts factory, many of them, and were making less than a dollar an hour. No options to bargain for better treatment. Both the labor rules in NAFTA and in Mexico Mexico's own labor law and practice must be upgraded to make real changes for workers both in Mexico and my district. Do you agree that Mexico has failed to live up to its obligations with respect to NAFTA's labor side agreement? Yes or no? Yes. So please explain how USTR is working to solve the problem of low wages and so-called protection unions, which you've identified yourself, not I, you, in Mexico, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. How are we working to get this done? Explain. Um, I would say, first of all, that, that while wages have been stagnant, and that was 
not our expectation at all when we entered into this agreement. If you look at the way it was sold, it was clearly sold as wages go up in Mexico. They became customers for us. We get to sell a lot more stuff, and that has not happened. I would say from the point of view of the Mexicans, it has created a lot of jobs, though. Low-income jobs, in our opinion, but a lot of jobs. Uh, and a lot of those have been in the auto industry. And I would suggest many of those at the expense of U.S. jobs. I, and, and that's important, isn't it, Mr. Ambassador, to understand the relationship between how low wages, I'm putting it as simple as possible, in Mexico do affect jobs and can I at least finish what I'm saying? I'm sorry, Ms. Pascrell, all time has expired. But maybe another member can yield to you at a few. I don't want anyone to yield. I'm asking you a question. Can no. I finish my question? I'm sorry, Mr. Pascrell. Well, you know what? That's time limit. Thank you. You're Mr. welcome. Mr. Jenkins. Ms. Jenkins, you're recognized. 